This is the Terrell P-34, rendered in 1/18 scale by True Scale Miniatures, as driven by Jody Schechter in the 1976 Grand Prix of Sweden. As Formula One cars go, all of them are works of engineering art, as year after year designers and aerodynamicists continue to push the envelope of what is deemed possible to do with an automobile. With such a rapid pace of development and challenging regulations, the 60 years of Formula One history have yielded a few vehicles which have withstood the test of time. To this day, these cars continue to distinguish themselves as unparalleled manifestations of ingenuity and human creativity, although many of these machines have not run in anger for decades. Seen here is an example of one such machine. By the mid-1970s, Formula One designers began seeing the importance of finding the balance between mechanical grip and aerodynamic efficiency. Engineers could pursue mechanical grip by fitting larger tires to the front of the car, which would place more rubber on the track surface thus yielding more grip through the corners. The effect of larger tires, however, was twofold. Despite the increase in mechanical grip, the turbulence and drag caused by dramatically increasing a car's frontal area almost completely negated the performance gained by fitting larger tires. In 1976, Ken Tyrrell and his designer Derek Gardner addressed this problem as well, and this is the solution they fielded. With cooperation from Goodyear, Tyrrell fitted his new car with not two, but four 10-inch diameter front wheels. Having four wheels in front would serve the same purpose to increase the contact patch of the car's front end, but the small size of the wheels, coupled with the oversized front wing, greatly reduced the car's total frontal area, thus solving the wake turbulence and drag problem. On paper, the design looked promising, although in reality, the team faced several critical areas in which they needed to perfect the concept if they wanted the car to have any chance of being competitive. First, the steering and braking system on the front end needed to be designed from the ground up. All four front wheels on the P-34 turn with the steering wheel. Thus, a mechanism was needed to not only link the steering racks to the steering wheel, but they also needed to be synchronized to ensure that both sets of wheels steered at the same rate. The braking system suffered similar difficulties. Again, all four front wheels were equipped with disc brakes, which needed to operate in unison and maintain their integrity throughout a Grand Prix distance. Also, the car's balance needed to be finely adjusted to compensate for a driver locking a wheel under heavy braking. Having two sets of front wheels effectively meant that if one set of wheels locked while the other continued to rotate, the length of the car's wheelbase would change momentarily and could cause the vehicle to react violently and unexpectedly to a driver's inputs. With these issues sorted, Tyrrell fielded the car for the first time at the 1976 Spanish Grand Prix. Despite a fair qualifying effort, mechanical difficulties caused an accident during the first few laps of the race. Undeterred, Tyrrell continued to develop the car and work out the issues that remained. Their efforts finally paid large dividends later on in the season. Round 7 of 1976 was the Grand Prix of Sweden, and Tyrrell's Jody Schechter was on pole. As the race unfolded, Schechter began to set a metronomic pace, while his teammate Patrick Depayet worked his way through the field from 4th to 2nd. After almost two hours, the race was won in dominant style by Schechter, who was followed home by his teammate Depaye. Their success saw Tyrrell establish themselves as consistent front runners for the duration of the season, regularly scoring points and challenging for podiums. In the end, Tyrrell finished third in the Constructors' Championship behind Big Guns, Ferrari, and McLaren, and drivers Jody Schechter and Patrick Depaye finished third and fourth in the Drivers' Championship behind James Hunt and Nicky Lauda. For scale model collectors, this piece by True Scale Miniatures is simply exquisite. The level of detail is truly mind-boggling, with hoses, lines, hardware, and bodywork running every which way on the model. Included in the car's long list of features is removable bodywork, removable rear wing, and the ability to mount and dismount all of the car's six wheels, which are secured by tiny wheel nuts. Fear not, a special wrench is included. A deeper look at the model will show that all four front wheels turn with the steering wheel in the cockpit, and are also independently sprung. At the rear, the detailing in the engine bay, dominated by the 3-liter Cosworth DFB, is breathtaking. For me, the highlight of the rear end is seeing the inboard-mounted brake discs rotate inside the rear brake calipers. Also, a seemingly endless array of connectors, clamps, fuel and ignition lines, radiators, and ductwork are also seen throughout the car. If you're somebody who's serious about collecting scale model cars and have a soft spot for the more technical and innovative side of Formula One, 
I would strongly recommend that you take a good long look at this Terrell P34. For the exacting and hands-on collector, this car is well worth the investment.